Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to Scrap Lift Sunday. We're lifting this gorgeous layout by Monique Tedelecki. Oh, I know I'm going to say that last name wrong. It is a beautiful name, but I am not great with names that have a lot of consonants altogether. I will link her down below along with Miranda Weber, who is joining me as she does every single Scrap Lift Sunday as this is our joint venture into experimentation. So Miranda picked this layout and it is a mixed media layout. The lovely Monique did a really pretty watercolor wash up here at the top in a broad range of colors and hers is a little bit more subtle than mine <laughs> because the palette I'm using in July that I've included in my July kit and have actually used to base my entire kit on is a bright pastel dreams from prima and so it's very bright bold but also has that pastel feel to it and i personally if i'm going to do mixed media tend to go big or go home and i'm gonna go big <laughs> i'm gonna bring in a lot of bold color here at the top and initially i wasn't sure exactly how much color how long the stripes of color should be and so at first I don't want to go too far down because you can always add on, but you can't subtract the paint off of the paper. So I started with about mm, four inches or so at the top. And then as I went and splattered and had a little bit more fun with it, I decided I needed a little bit more and then pulled it down another inch or so. So at this point, I'm just sort of playing. I did have a little issue with a gnat that was trying to jump into my paint. Not ideal scenario, honestly, but uh, we do the best we can with the situation we're in. So using this beautiful watercolor palette, I've created a rainbow stripe of sorts across the top. And now I'm gonna bring in a much smaller size to round brush to kind of work the colors together, make them mix just a little bit in a few spots. I'm trying to keep the watercolor from pooling at both the top or the bottom. So anywhere I see that happening, I'm pulling the color up. Now here's one thing that I did a little differently than Monique. She did some splattering on her layout, but not quite like this. She had like three areas on the layout where she decided to splatter. I decided to splatter on top of my watercoloring just because I like the way it looks. I think it gives it a little bit of depth that makes it look a little bit more textured to have the splatter on top of the watercolor. So this was a little bit of experimentation on my part, just going through each of the colors, adding it on top of the watercolor wash, and then I decide I need more watercolor. So once I saw this, I have my photos, put my photos up next to this amount of paint. I realize I really want to go a little deeper, I want to go down just a little bit further. And also while I'm cleaning up, I managed to uh, smudge my splatter there on the left side. Not ideal. So I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and bring this down. I already feel like it's not quite enough and it's not quite a bright enough. I wanted more bold color. I didn't want it to look subtle because I am not a subtle person and the photos I'm scrapping are not super subtle either. And so having this bold watercolor in the background really helps to accent those photos and accent the theme I'm working with for this layout. And that general theme is embrace the chaos because watercoloring with my twins is always a bit messy and wild. And I wanted to grab that feeling from what the photos represent and illustrate it into my design. And I do this fairly often because I want to really capture the moment in the photos in the layout. I really want you to feel it. And so quite often that is what I'm doing when I go a bit chaotic in my <laughs> scrapbooking. I'm trying to express a more chaotic feeling at the same time. So now I'm covering up my splatters here just because again, I want to bring that color down. I brought it down about an inch and then I'll go back and re-add my splatters back in. No big deal. Watercolor is super versatile, super easy. It's kind of hard to mess up, to be honest with you. Really, even if you don't quite get the effect you were looking for, quite often you'll get something you can work with. And in this case, one of the things that kind of bugged me was that my colors, 
who were overlapping a little too much, a little bit more than I was comfortable with. And so by moving the paper around, by using my small uh, number two round brush to uh, push the color back, I was able to keep it more or less where I wanted it to be. Now, of course, when you're working with water in general, you're going to have a little bit of movement on the page with your paint. Now, for some reason, I'm still not quite clear on how this happened. When I splattered with the yellow over the yellow stripe, it went everywhere. So <laughs> there's yellow splatters across the entire rest of the rainbow. And you guys, that happens. Things like that are part of the process. It's mixed media. It's messy. There's going to be things like that that happen. I just decided to go with it. Remember, too, with mixed media, quite often you end up covering up quite a bit of that mixed media work. So what pops out the sides is what is really interesting and layering in your background. So that, that base layer can be messy because you're going to cover up quite a bit. And so don't stress. That's, that's where I'm going. Don't stress about small things not quite going right with your mixed media because there are no real mistakes in scrapbooking. Only opportunities to embellish creatively. <laughs> so now the next layer of this layout is a lot of paper. There are about five paper layers behind the photo in this original layout. That's a lot of paper layering. I don't normally do that much matting to my photo. And so what I decided to do to make this a little easier for myself is instead of going all the way around, like Monique did with most of her layers, I went all the way around with two of the layers. And then I just went out to the sides horizontally with the remaining two layers that I did. And because the rainbow swatch across the top is very horizontal and the placement of the photos is very vertical, I wanted to have a more horizontal feel to the entire layout to match that horizontal rainbow at the top. Whereas with Monique's layout, she really went more vertical in her design. I want it to go a bit more horizontal. So I'm stretching out those paper layers to the side instead of the top and bottom like Monique did, making it my own. The whole purpose is to find inspiration from other people and make it your own. I really enjoy scrap lifting. I think it's a lot of fun. I think it really challenges you to step outside of your normal comfort zone and to try something new, to experiment. So that is the whole purpose of this lovely series that Miranda and I do, is to push each other to try new things. And this is definitely a style I probably would not have chosen to do out of nowhere. It's not something that really would have just popped up in my head. That's what I need to do. I am curious though. Let me know in the comments below whether or not you scrap lift often because I really enjoy it in this series, but most of the time I just use my own designs. So one of the things that I knew I wanted to use on this layout because it is a painting layout are these little fussy cut paint tubes. Now these were on an Alexandra Ranky paper that I included in my stash kit and I love them so much, but they're kind of random. And other than on painting layouts, I don't really know where else I'd use them. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to use quite a few of them on the side of these photos. So I have put in some leaves to fill in sort of a background layer. And then I'm going to pop all of these, not all, but quite a few of these paint tubes in here and fill it in like I would normally use florals. Now, a couple of things I want you to notice. I am layering some bits on top of other pieces that gives the impression of dimension because you have layering happening. You've got the leaves in the background. We have multiple layers of paint tubes happening. And those paint tubes are not all lined up perfectly the same on the right edge. They're overlapping onto my journaling spot because that helps to bring the eye all the way over through the page. The photos grab your attention first, 
but it leads the eye through the rest of the design. Now, I really like this little journaling spot, even though it's gray. I thought, I can make it work. I can make that work. And so I just went ahead and tucked it in there and decided somehow I'm gonna make this gray card work. And this was part of Monique's original design. She had a pocket page card or cut apart of some kind over here to the right. And so I included that as well. I added a small title underneath of my photos. That's something Monique did not do, but I felt like that little gap needed to be filled in. And I do really like a title on my layouts. For me, it just helps me make it feel complete and I really like the look of it. So now I'm trimming off two sides of my layout here because I am gonna go ahead and add on a border. Monique did this as well, and I didn't notice it at first, or I probably would have set this up a little bit differently <laughs> had I realized there was a border. But this has happened with the last couple of scrap lifts for me where the details didn't really pop out to me until after I had already started scrapbooking. So adding this nice grid background that has a bit of gray in it helped to bring in that pocket page card a little bit more. Then I'm gonna come in with some gold and black Nouveau drops to accent the edges and the florals a little bit, adding in some scattering with these Chamel puffy stickers. I'm mostly grabbing the floral pieces and just tucking them in around my floral clusters. And I really wanted to use these up. I think the trickiest part of these stickers are the little animal faces. And I used, have used several, but between those and the tiny cameras, I am trying very hard to use up that whole pack because I think I have another pack buried in my stash. They, I get things like this from older Chamel collections quite often in warehouse boxes or in sales and things like that where you can just get a whole pile of stuff for really cheap. And I'm all about, hey, let's get a discount. <laughs> so if I know I'm gonna like what's in it, I don't mind getting a warehouse box. If I'm not sure, I'm less likely to get the warehouse box. Now, these are some chipboard word phrases from HipKit Club. And I'm gonna go ahead and add three of these in the midst of my paint tubes. I think they add just a really nice bit of wordiness to the layout. I do like to put a lot of words on my layouts, guys. I just enjoy words so much. I love to talk. I love to write. Uh, I think the words are just an important part of my life and they kind of leaked into my scrapbooking as well. So you'll notice I do put a lot of words and often quite a bit of journaling on my layouts as well. So adding a few more bits and pieces and this one is done. No gold splatter this time because I've already splattered with my watercolor. But I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And until next time, bye.